Hi, my name is Hilary Stupa, and I am a developer with Qdabra Software, and I want to uh, do a quick demo video on using Microsoft Flow with an InfoPath form library. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I've signed into Flow, and I'm going to select New Flow. Now you can create from a template. There's a lot of templates to choose from. Um, I tend to start with a blank flow. I'm I'm going to call this. Uh, Flow Info Path Demo. Just find a naming convention you can live with and stick with it. Um, this is just a demo flow, but a lot of times you might want to incorporate more details in your name. There's some best practices, white papers out there from Microsoft that can help you. Um, and mine is going to be when an item is created or modified in SharePoint. Now, I'm using an Info Path library, but let's remember that at its heart, these things are also lists. And so I don't need the file content here. I'm going to leverage some promotion properties but right now I just want item is created or modified in SharePoint and that's going to be the trigger for my flow when this action happens then I'm gonna do some stuff and I'm gonna go ahead and hit create here I'm gonna hit create again maybe let's see what happens this time there we go all right so I'm gonna put in my site address here um, I'm over here this is my demo I'm just gonna copy this URL and it might be in the list. Um, no, it is in the list. So it's either going to be in the list or you can hit enter custom value. I'm going to do enter custom value just to, to demonstrate that. Now look, here's a list of, of lists and these are literally just my lists. But this right here is an InfoPath library. And so libraries don't show by default in that list and that's okay. I'm going to enter a custom value and there is my list name. Under advanced options, you can limit the columns returned by using a view, selecting a view. I don't need to do that here. So now I've got my trigger. Um, I'm going to add my next step, which is going to be a condition. And it popped up here first for me, but if you need to look for it, you would type in. I really encourage you to use search in Flow uh, just because there are um, so many things now, so many actions. Okay, I'm going to rename my condition uh, because I don't want to have to try to look at this later and pick through every single condition. Um, and this is going to be uh, status equals, I can't even remember what, what statuses I put in my form, but we're going to do status equals complete. Okay, so if you have successfully connected to your library, you will see a bunch of dynamic content here. And I promoted my status field so there is my status and I had better make sure I know what the values of that field might be and it's sad because I just created this form minutes ago but I don't remember what the values of the, that field might be um, so I've got in process complete and not implemented so we want to make sure we match that text that field is promoted and here I can type in a value I can choose a dynamic value or I can use an expression but I just want to do something if status is equal to complete Okay, and so now over here in if yes, I can do something. If no, I can do something. Um, I'm going to do, just because this is a simple demo, I'm just going to notify myself that it's completed. Um, I'm going to click that button again. All right, and I'm going to send me an email notification. And my subject is, oh, you know, I'm, yeah, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. My subject is going to be uh, item complete and click down here. I don't complete. So really fancy, really fancy stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to save my flow. That's important. If I have any errors, they're going to show up in the flow checker up here. I don't have any errors. It's this is a very simple flow. I didn't uh, I didn't add any submit uh, logic to to my test, and it looks like I don't have a save button. No, I don't want to. So let me just pause, and I shall go fix this. 
or actually I don't think I can pause. We'll edit this later. We'll edit we'll edit this part out maybe or maybe you're just going to be stuck watching me fix this. And that's fine too. So here we go. I'm just going to republish this form with some submit logic. So let's just do design and let's throw a submit on there and you know I don't trust that ribbon that ribbon's making me uncomfortable because in my opinion that ribbon should have save on it and I don't see it so let's just throw a button on here we, we can't leave it in an illogical place button properties we're gonna say submit I'm using the built-in Windows uh, Windows 10 screen recorder. It's um, the Xbox game recorder thing, and I see a stop button, but I don't see any kind of a pause. So that's why I am forcing you uh, to watch this portion. Let's see, submit, and we are going to submit data. This is very boring, and we're going to add submit data. Uh, da, 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 document library um, we are we are there's absolutely no way we are going to uh, yes I want to close it there's no way we're going to type this in so we're just going to copy it control C and control and I'm just going to name it uh, you know what, I'm just going to name it with the now function, which we would not do this in, in the real world, right? But that's okay. This is not the real world. And next, one thing you should know um, about when an item is created or modified while I'm publishing this, we'll just have another teachable moment, right? Um, one thing you should know about when an item is created or modified is that uh, that is done via polling. So it's not... Uh, that it happens instantly every single time an item is created or modified. You need to anticipate that there might be a little bit of lag. Um, there are other things that you can do uh, instantly in flow, but, but for some of these triggers that are based on um, things changing in a list or library, uh, there, is some, there is some lag. So now we've got that republished with a submit button. So let's try again filling this out. Oh look, and now we've got submit up there too. Isn't life good? So we're going to do one in process and submit it. I did not have uh, closed this form, so let's see what happened with my submit. Yes, there we go. Uh, we should have submitted that. Great. This is <laughs> these are the high quality demos you've learned to expect from me. And you can see we've got in process there. So let's mark this one as complete and submit. Okay, and so we know that's submitted. We'll just hit close here so we can look at our library. Yes, <laughs> world's worst form design. <laughs> so, okay, so we've got two in. We've got one that's in process and one that's complete. Our in process one should get, what, ignored, right? Because our condition is only looking for complete. Our complete one has an action that sends an email. So back here, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Look, we both know that I saved this. This is like a we get a lot of really hyper aggressive checking on whether or not things have changed and and I saved it you guys watched me oh and look my flows ran instantly so something's going well in my life this morning this endless week of Mondays and so here we go now here's the beauty in flow I just want to show you this one more time because I'm so in love with it we can see our prior runs and when we go and we look at a prior run we can actually see what happened so my flow my flow run loads up to show me what happened and it's interesting because it loaded up really quickly the time before this and now it's loading up really slowly just due to some sort of passive aggressive fit we'll take another look at this one this one's going to have been from in process and this is going to be the one that, that ran from uh, complete I think just based on the time change so look at this I've got a green check mark showing me that this succeeded I can look down here at my outputs and I can see all of the data so when you're trying to figure out something tricky like what a value might be in a field this data output is something you can look at and you can see all of the data that was returned from this from this call um, and so I'm looking for my status there's my status right there and that's what I had my condition based on we move down here to status equals complete now this is the only thing I don't care about in flow is these conditions it shows me the expression result but it doesn't tell me what the values were that I passed in. So sometimes if you have some confusion as to what might be happening, you can add a little compose step here and set it to 
uh, parts of your expression there so you can see a little bit better what's going on. And here we can see down here that the email sends. And if we look at our other one, or that one, we can also see that expression results is false. Got a little X there, so it took the no path. We don't have any actions in our no path. Nothing happened. But at any rate, that's a quick little sample of creating a flow based off an InfoPath library and leveraging a promoted property. And if you're new to flow, I encourage you to just dig in and try things. It is a fantastic tool. I have never, ever loved workflow. And I do now. I am excited when we have a project come in and there, there's flow involved. If you are um, a developer, it's really flexible. It's really extensible. It has some huge features in it that you can use. If you are, um, you know, just John or Jane Doe sitting in your office trying to automate something, it's friendly enough that, that it's easy for you to use too. It's really a universal tool. I encourage you to give it a shot. Thanks for watching.